Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So since it's been a little while I decided I would make another tier list. So if you don't know what a tier list is, it's basically you just rank things from S all the way down to D. And um, today we're going to be doing Mario games because who doesn't love Mario games? They're honestly my childhood. I love playing them a lot and some of them I still do play today. Every once in a while when I just um, feel like playing as a fat Italian plumber. So... Anyways, let us get started. So first off, we have a Super Mario Maker. So Super Mario Maker was pretty cool. Basically, it came out in 2015, and how that worked was, um, so I think 2015 or 16, I don't really remember, honestly. Um, but, I don't know, I'll just put it in the, I'll just put a little text thing on the screen. But uh, anyway, basically what uh, Super Mario Maker allowed you to do was make your own, um, Mario levels, and, um, when you did that, you could basically, um, just, um, add all these different types of items, you could add enemies, you could add different themes, you got to pick from, uh, Super Mario Bros. 1, uh, you got to pick from Super Mario Bros. 3, um, fucking, um, I think it was New Super Mario Bros., and I, in Mario World, yeah, that's what it was. So, um, yeah, I heard Mario Maker 2 expand on a lot of those things. They let you add a 3D world, and they had, um, you could make your own super worlds, too, which was basically, um, just, like, a world thing for you to play through, and basically, um, after you get bored of making your own levels, you can make up to 100, but, um, the thing is, you have to get community support and all that, so I, I didn't really get all that much community support. I guess my levels just sucked, um, so I was only able to make 10, um, so far, but then... They have all these other things you can do. It's um, like 10 Mario Challenge, where you can play through other people's levels with 10 lives. And 100 Mario Challenge, where you can play through other people's levels with 100 lives. But um, after you get bored of people playing people's levels and sharing your own levels, <coughs> the game got a little stale. It was kind of fun, but after a while it got a little boring. So we're going to give that a B. So, Paper Jam, man. I do not like Paper Jam. So basically what Paper Jam was, when I first saw the um, trailer, I was all thinking, this is going to be awesome. This is so cool. I mean, um, basically it was um, the Paper Mario world and um, the um, Mario and Luigi RPG world um, combined, and it was awesome. And basically I was thinking, oh, this is going to be so cool. There's going to be like all the original characters from Paper Mario and everything. This is so cool. But no, basically all it was was Mario meets Paper Mario. Uh, Bowser Jr. meets Paper Bowser Jr. Bowser meets Paper Bowser. I thought it was going to be something such as, oh, Fawful gets to meet Dementio. That would be so cool. Like the king of wisecrackers and everything. But no, I didn't like it. And a lot of the stuff was just toad-centered and all that. And it was just really ridiculous and monotonous with a lot of things. So I did not like that. We're going to give it a D. So, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. I do not like this one either. This one fucking sucked. Um... And basically what it was, was it was the sequel to Luigi's Mansion. And by the way, they took 12 fucking years to um, make this. And basically what it was, was um, instead of one gigantic mansion where you were just free to roam it whenever you wanted, um, basically it was just, um, there's five little small mansions and stuff. And they all had their own theme, I guess, but that was kind of cool. And, um... Instead of cool bosses, I guess it was just like these possessor ghosts just possess freaking like items. One of them was a giant clock, an ice monster who was really hard to defeat, and a bunch of other stuff. And I just didn't like it all that much, really. Um, it was basically, I think they shifted developers. I don't remember which people made the first Luigi's Mansion, but um, they changed developers, and um, I didn't really like it. But, yeah, basically, um, it was kind of stupid with a lot of things, because let's say you're playing the original Luigi's Mansion, and you're about to fight the Area 2 boss, but then you forgot to um, go do something. You can just go back and do it. But then in Dark Moon, it's also mission-based, which makes it more linear, and it's just, um, go here and do this, instead of, oh, you can go do this in Luigi's Mansion 1, but you can't go do it in Luigi's Mansion 2, which is really dumb. A lot of times, Egad will just call you up and be like, Luigi, what are you doing? You have to fight the boss. You can't fucking go do that. You have to pick whichever mission it is to do it. So, D-tier. I don't like Dark Moon. So, next is um, 
Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. So I like this one a lot, and it is a lot of people's favorite uh, Mario and Luigi game, and I will probably have to agree with that. I liked it too. Um, and basically what happens in this game is um, this guy named Fawful, basically he was from Superstar Saga, he was briefly in a cameo in uh, Partners in Time, and he was just the main villain in Superstar Saga and everything. Basically what he did was after he was presumably dead and fell out of a castle, he basically gave Bowser this um, vacuum mushroom to make him eat everything. And he ate um, Mario and Luigi and everything. Mario and Luigi are trapped inside of Bowser's body. And it's, it's really cool. There's a lot of cool game mechanics. Um, Bowser can go giant, which is really, really cool. I like that a lot. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty great. And um, I will definitely give this one an S tier. I really like this game a lot. All right. So, New Super Mario Bros. U next. Um, I think I can say this. Yeah. It's about time. Like, after a while, it was just... Yeah, this literally came out the same year that, um, freaking New Super Mario Bros. 2 came out and everything, and it's just got to be oversaturation. It was kind of like with the, the Guitar Hero games, where, um, after a while, it was like, oh, New Super Mario Bros., so that was, that was pretty cool, and then later, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, oh, that's, that's cool, I guess, and it's not really new anymore, but, um, another game to play, that's cool. Okay, New Super Mario Bros. 2, okay, series starting to get stale, all right. And then New Super Mario Bros. U, and then, okay, now the series is definitely getting stale. And then they're like, New Super Mario Bros. New, New Super Luigi U! Okay, that was kind of cool. It's just like shorter levels, but they're harder. And it's like, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe! It's okay, okay, we get it. It's not new anymore. It's stupid. It's not. It's, it's about as new as New York. It's dumb. I didn't like it. But, um... New Super Mario Bros. Um, Wii, I actually enjoyed that one a lot. Basically what they did was, um, it's just probably my favorite New Super Mario Bros. game. Basically what they did was they just took older concepts and stuff such as Mushroom, Flower, and Safe Peach and all that. Koopalings are in this game too, and they just um, made it um, pretty cool, and I enjoyed this one a lot. It has great level design and all that. And um, yeah, we're going to give this one an 8th tier. It's pretty fun. Uh, New Super Mario Bros. Uh, original, I don't really know where to put this one, because I haven't finished it, you know, um, so, I don't, I don't think I should put it in the never played, I got to, like, world three, but, yeah, I thought it was okay, we're gonna put it in B tier, and then Super Mario Bros. 2, um, I don't really know where to put this, it's not a bad game, but it's not a good game either, um, it was kind of funny, actually, sort of a little, um, story about this one, um, if some of you guys didn't know, basically what happened was, when Nintendo made, uh, the original Super Mario Bros., they also made another one, Super Mario Bros. 2, which was what people got in Japan only, and it was basically just very hard levels, um, in the Super Mario Bros. style, and everything, and, um, it was just, uh, they literally released it in All-Stars, which, um, they called it the Lost Levels when we finally got it and everything. And, um, yeah, it was it was pretty cool, I guess. But the, the thing that was funny was they, basically, they were all, oh, Americans are gonna hate Mario if they have to play this game. So they just took this weird Japanese game called A Doki Doki Panic and, um, just made it and, and put it, slept on Mario. I guess they had, like, a genie or something and an Arabian princess and they just changed it to Toad and Peach and everything. Um, yeah, but it was kind of a weird game, because normally in just about every Mario game I've played, you can jump on Goombas, um, but in this one, like, you walk on a Goomba, and they just, like, carry you, it's weird, you have to pick things up and, like, hurl vegetables at people, it's a weird-ass game, but, I mean, yeah, a lot of things are strange in Japan, so we're gonna give that a C tier. Um, Super Mario Odyssey, I have not played that one, but... Um, from what I've heard, like, I would probably get it at A tier if I did play, just because what people have been saying, they say it's really good and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't played that one, honestly. So then Super Mario RPG, I have, um, played this one, sort of, I played it some, but, um, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I sort of remember the story, I think, like, Bowser kidnaps Peach and stuff, and there's these guys with, like, wooden marionette dude named Gino, you get to play as him. A lot of people thought that was cool, I suppose, um, and people were like, Gino for Smash, but I mean, he sort of belongs to Square Enix, and Square Enix helped make this game. Um, they were <coughs> some people who created Final Fantasy, so I guess if you like Final Fantasy, you'd probably like this game. But that one's pretty good, so we're going to give it a B tier. And uh, Super Mario 3D Land, 
it basically was just um, lands. Um, I think it was um, it was actually the first 3DS game I played, and I've actually completed this one too, on 100%. And um, there is a lot to do in this game. I will say, um, you know, sometimes Mario games such as New Super Mario Bros. Wii that had um, eight worlds to play through, and then a hey, uh, World Nine, and then um. I think uh, New Super Mario Bros. U had the same eight worlds to play through, and then a World Nine, and then um, New Super Mario Bros. Two had uh, eight worlds to play through, and then I think it had like four special worlds, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, it had um, it was like World Mushroom, World Star, maybe World Firefly. I don't remember. It's been a while since I played that game. Then um, games such as Super Mario 3D World um, also had a lot of extra worlds. It had like World Star, World Mushroom, World Fire, World Crown. So it had like four extra special worlds, but this one has a was a whopping eight extra worlds. So it has sixteen worlds to play through. I mean, goddamn, there's a lot of content, but it is kind of boring because a lot of the times, um, it's all oh, this is the reskin of another game of another level. <sighs> so it's not awful, but it's not good either. It's just kind of linear and weak in a way. But yeah, it's it's all right, I guess. Um. Super Paper Mario, um, this is honestly a great Paper Mario game, I actually did a full let's play of it on my channel about like th three or four years ago at this point, um, it's been a while, um, but I don't know, I guess a little shameless plug if you want, fucking watch it if you care, um, but yeah, it's a pretty good game and um, I like the story a lot, it had a crazy story for a Mario game, like it honestly made me think of something they put in an anime or something, I don't even watch anime, but I mean it just seemed pretty crazy, and basically what happened was this guy named Count Black comes along and he wants to destroy all worlds because somebody um, he used to date, I guess, um, was taken away from him, and then we later learn that the person who was taken away from him has been turned into a, uh, a type of freaking like pixel, and um, it turns out that's who we're traveling with and everything, and at the end of the game, they reunite and everything, and, um, it, it was a pretty cool game, that was the one that Dementio was from, he was just, he was really funny, and I enjoyed him, it had really cool characters, O-Chunks was another character, he's really funny, um, so we're gonna put that in the A tier, I enjoyed that one a lot, and then, um, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, I was talking about that one recently, too, <laughs> but basically, yeah, this one's a good game as well, um, I thought about doing a let's play for it for my channel, but then I didn't just because I've only beaten it once, and you know, I like to be uh, play a lot of games if I've beaten them comfortably and everything, like at least three, four, five times or something sometimes, just, um, so I know them well, I guess, and I accidentally put a little dash there, I accidentally hit my keyboard, um, but basically, yeah, I liked it a lot, the plot of this one was this um, person named Kakaletta is working with Fawful, and she like steals Princess Peach's voice for some reason, I don't remember much of it. It's been a while since I played it, but I liked it. Um, I'll give it a B tier because there were some parts that were frustrating and linear at some points. And uh, Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Doors is probably my favorite Mario game ever. Honestly, we're gonna give that an S tier. I don't think anybody will be will argue with me on that one. Um, it is really great, and basically, just what happens in that one is um, Peach is kidnapped and everything by the Xnots and them. We need to collect the crystal stars to open the um, thousand year door and everything. That's why it's called the thousand year door. And um, the X Nots use Peach's body um, to basically awaken the Shadow Queen and everything. And um, there was lots of cool characters in it. Uh, partners were cool. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot and everything. So, yeah, it was a really great game, and I, did, I also did a Let's Play of that on my channel a while ago, so check that out if you want. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that one a lot. So, uh, Super Mario 3D World, this one was also really great. Um, they, You got to play as Mario, Luigi, Toad, Peach, and Rosalina, so that was pretty cool. Um, and they did a thing where this time, instead of kidnapping Peach, Bowser kidnaps some of these little fairies called Sprixies. And, um, green stars are back, so that's pretty cool, and, um, yeah, there's, um, a lot of extra worlds to go through, and I just liked it a lot, it was really fun, and, um, even though it's on a terrible console, the Wii U is probably Nintendo's second biggest failure, other than, I don't know, a pair of goggles on a stand that makes your eyes bleed if you wear it for too long, um, yeah, it was really good and everything, and I enjoyed that one a lot, um, 3D World was great, and I've yet to play the remaster of Bowser's Fury, but if I ever buy a Switch, then maybe I'll think about it. And everything it might be cool to take that game on the go, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. 
and I did enjoy it. It was almost, um, it was sort of like a sequel to 3D Land, but I liked that one a lot better. And the new Super Mario Bros. 2. I don't like this one at this point. It was kind of, oh, oh, nah, I'm going to give it a C tier. It wasn't as, the, the, the series was still semi-new at the time. This was the third game of the series, I guess, but... This is Mario Bros. U is the fourth game after a while. Just, yeah, I get it. It's not new. It seems as if that's what Nintendo's putting out just um, when they have no ideas, you know. it's I guess it's just... I guess it's the, the thing that, I don't know, it's sort of like at the dinner table. Oh, somebody somebody brought the, the broccoli casserole? I'll have a bite, but I, I, won't, I won't eat the whole thing. It's sort of like that. This is Mario Bros. U has kind of made me try it out, but don't finish the whole game, I guess, you know. It's one of those things. Um, but yeah, New Super Mario Bros. 2 was okay, I guess. Um, I got that game when I was really young. I was 10 or something, and I guess I... Um, the funny thing is, yeah, I got that game 10 years ago, and one of the goals is collect a million coins. And I've been through, um, three 3DSs so far, because those things break super easily. And the other one I have is broken, too. If I, I don't even really play 3DS games anymore, I might get a fourth one. But I've been through three 3DSs and probably like 50, 60, 70, maybe 80, 90. I don't even know how many hours of gameplay I have on that one. <laughs> but um, one of the main goals is to get to a million coins, and I'm only like a quarter of the way there. So I guess um, if I'm, I think Satoru Iwata designed this game, he, I think he said something about he's trying to get people to play the game for a really long time. And I guess he succeeded because I've been playing it for 10 years and I still don't have a million coins. Probably just because... I didn't really care about the game, and it just wasn't something that I've seen some people do. They're like, you gotta play Coin Rush non-stop, get 30,000 every time. And just after a while, I was just, I don't care, I'm not gonna keep playing that, I don't really give a fuck, I'm not gonna sit down. And most of the time, it's just one of those games I'd play and just get bored after, like, an hour, you know. It's not, like, Galaxy or something where I could just play it really for a really long time and not get bored, you know. Um, but anyway, next one, um, we have... A dream team. That one was really good. Probably my second um, Mario and Luigi RPG um, favorites. But basically, what happens in that one is this game is really funny, and I think it also took me the longest to beat. Um, took me about 40 hours to beat, and um, I still haven't finished that one to 100%. I just have like beans left and <coughs> like battle ring stuff um, left and all that. But it was really cool, um, you know, and. Um, one of the things that was the main mechanic is it's called uh, Dream Team. For some reason in Europe, it's called Dream Team Bros, but I don't know. But anyways, um, the thing is with that game, basically what happened was, it turns out that Luigi has the power when he sleeps on pillows to make a dream portal so that Mario can enter his dreams and everything. And it's just uh, really cool, and I thought that was awesome that you get to extreme, explore the dream world and everything. And it was just a lot of fun, and had cool characters, and all that, and, um, I just enjoyed that one a lot, so, yeah. Um, next one we have is Galaxy 2. Uh, I'll give that one an S tier, I really enjoyed Galaxy 2. I did a, a Let's Play on that one as well, um, of a Google Translated version, where the text is all super screwed up and everything. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting, and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, basically, what happens is, um, it's the sequel to Mario Galaxy 1, where basically it's sort of the same plot, where, um, basically what happens is Peach gets kidnapped, and, um, this, this, because Mario goes to a star festival where a star comet happens only a, every 100 years, so I guess that would mean Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 take place 100 years apart, so, I don't know, Mario can live, just, like, skip some regular show, he lives forever, anyway, I don't fucking know, but I digress, um, but anyway, yeah, basically that's what happens in that one, and, uh, yeah, just Mario goes to space, and you get to explore a lot of cool galaxies, and uh, one of the things I really liked about Galaxy 2 was um, you get to play as Luigi just randomly at, at some point until he's appearing levels and you can just play as him. And um, then after you finish Bowser for the first time, after you beat him, you get to uh, play as Luigi forever. And except in um, Galaxy 1, the thing I didn't like about that was you have to beat the whole game. You have to get all 120 stars and then you, can, um, you have to start all over and play the game as Luigi. You can't just... Um, do, I guess, what you can do in Galaxy 2, where, oh, you got, um, 65 stars, I guess, and there's 70 or something, and you want to go back and play the first level as Luigi, you get, um, that, that you can't do that in Galaxy 1, you have to go all the way through the whole game or whatever, and it's just kind of goofy, and I guess, in Galaxy 2, um, 
It kind of was cool because after you play the game a level as Luigi, you got a little Luigi ghost, which is like a Nintendo staff ghost. You don't really get anything for beating them or anything, um, but it's just kind of cool to see uh, oh somebody else playing the level or whatever. And then Yoshi's New Island. Sort of like the new Super Mario Bros. games. It wasn't really new. It was just same mechanics. Just better graphics and stuff. I didn't like that one at all. Um, I played it and I just thought it was dumb. It was just... Got to kind of play as Yoshi, but that's kind of cool, I guess. It's a little stupid. I guess Nintendo was put new in front of a game just to make it be all, you know. And it's like New York, New Jersey, New England, I guess. And they've had the word new in front of them for a long time, but they're not new anymore. I mean, since somebody show me where old England is, you know what I mean? But uh, next we have is a Color Splash, and I've never played that one. But um, what I've heard is... People have said it's basically almost like Sticker Star 2, which I fucking despised, and I did a whole rant video on it. Um, basically, yeah, they just took away partners in, the, in Color Splash and everything, and um, yeah, what, from what I've heard, it's either a mixed bag. People really say it's great, and they're like, well, if it's better than Sticker Star, I don't care, you know, it's like a turd versus a turd wrapped in gold, you know, they're... Like, I don't know, gra grabbing a turd with your bare hands versus grabbing a turd with, I don't know, a tissue. It's, this is basically that that way, in my opinion, you know, or, I don't know, eating a turd versus eating a turd with salt on it. This, this is what I think about it, basically. Because some people said, well, it's better than Sticker Star or anything, but um, other people have just said, well, it's awful, you know, it's it's not Thousand Year Door, it's not uh, Paper Mario 1, it's not uh, Super Paper Mario, you know. Um, but yeah, I guess it's just not as good and everything. And then, Super Mario Land, I've never played that, but what I've heard from people is it's okay. Luigi's Mansion, uh, remastered. Um, or wait, this isn't... Wait, wait, this isn't the remastered version, <laughs> this is the original, regular version. I thought this was the remastered version for some reason, but no, this is just the, the regular version. Um... So basically, Luigi's Mansion, I like a lot. Um, I have also done two Let's Plays on that. One with, um, was filmed on my shitty cell phone back in 2019 or so. Or, and then another that I filmed with my capture card and everything. Um, basically, yeah, it's a really fun game. Basically, what happens is uh, Mario gets trapped in a haunted mansion by the booze. And you get, a, you get a cool vacuum to suck up ghosts and everything as Luigi. It was really fun. And the game is also relatively short, so you can finish in about 5-6 hours. It's not a game that you have to sit there for like 100 hours, like Skyrim or something. That game took me so long to beat, and I'm still not even done with everything. But anyway, I digress. Um, that game was a lot of fun, and um, even if you live in Europe, or if you just... Um, happen to um nowadays you can just get dolphin emulator or something on your wii or whatever or something on some other console that might be able to run emulators you could just get the uh pal version of the game and everything and just um basically just play the pal version where it's um the damage is different um the vacuum is stronger the um the uh, whole mansion is mirrored, and they're harder enemies and everything, and h stronger booze, faster booze. So yeah, it's just a whole lot of fun. They just really mix it up, because in the original game, Luigi's Mansion, when you beat the game and do the hidden mansion, all it is is just a stronger vacuum and double damage. That's it. Like, this one is like stronger vacuum, double damage, mirrored, like, new ghosts, new booze. It's everything. It's like a whole new game. It's a lot of fun. Even the L on Luigi's head is mirrored, so yeah, it's really cool. Um... <coughs> Excuse me, Partners in Time. Fuck this game, I hate it. It's like the sticker star of the RPG games, basically. Um, it might have been cool, I guess, go, like going back in time with, in Mario games, you know, that was really fun, I guess. It was a cool concept on paper. Um, but basically the game, what it ended up doing was the shops are really few and far between and stuff. And basically what they did was really, really fucking stupid. Um, in the game was basically in every other Mario RPG game, let's say you want to do a bros attack, you do a shell that costs four bros points, and, um, then you just do it more and you run out of, and then after a while you run out of bros points, and then, um, you would just, um, refill it with, um, an item called a syrup. But then in Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, basically what happens is um, you would either get them from blocks or get them from fighting enemies or you'd have to go and buy them. But special attacks are cost money and stuff. Like you don't just uh, have it forever after you get an attack piece or in Super Mario 
uh, the Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, you basically just learn them and everything from, I don't know, one of them is like, oh, you have to, these one guys do this spin move, and then Mario and Luigi are, oh, I can copy that, you know, and it basically just works that way, um, but in uh, Dream Team and Paper Jam and everything, you get, like, little items from attack pieces and all that, and basically you just um, get them and have them forever, you know, but then let's say you run out of mixed flowers or something and you're in a dire situation, you can't just refill it with syrup, you have to basically go to the shops and um, gauge how much of each item you want, will I be able, will I use this here, will I use this there, it was just really annoying, just didn't like it, enemies were too strong at some points to the, to the point where it just felt like a chore, it didn't even feel, feel fun to play and everything, and um, yeah, it was just kind of stupid at some points, I just didn't really enjoy it, I didn't have fun, and, um, yeah, what ended up happening was after a while, I couldn't even beat the final boss, because I made it all the way to the final boss, but then I was so low level that I couldn't actually beat him, I was only, like, level 25 or something, people recommend you be at least, like, level 30, 40 or something. Um, but yeah, it was basically, that's what happened, I just avoided every enemy after a while, because I was all, this is so stupid, this is so boring, I'm running out of things, I just hate this, so I just, um, got mad and didn't want to play it anymore, but... Yeah, Partners in Time was not very good. That was probably why it didn't get a remaster when Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story did. So anyway, next we have um, Paper Mario. And I didn't finish this one all the way, but um, I'll give it a B tier, basically. And what happens is um, it was kind of a linear plot, but that's okay. Because um, Sticker Star had a linear plot, but I mean, they didn't make up for it with other things. Paper Mario won. Um, I was only getting like chapter four or something, but I, but I played this really good. Um, and it's it's really similar to um, uh, freaking Thousand Year Door in a way, and everything. And that was kind of what I liked about it. There were recipes. There were little, like little side quests. There were um, just uh, things you could do. You could play as Peach in both of those games, and it was really cool. You couldn't like play as her in Free Roam or anything, and I don't know, beat up Goombas with an umbrella. But it was it was fun though, I guess. Um, and there were just points you could do that, and it was just a lot of fun, and, um, yeah, I just, I thought it was great, and even though Bowser kidnaps Peach and everything, he still does this thing, like, as a motive, he has a star rod and all these things, and the cool little rod that can grant wishes, so that was interesting, and I just enjoyed, um, parts of that, but then Sticker Star, oh, Sticker Star, oh, Sticker Star, oh, Sticker Star, you fucking, I want to strangle you if you're a person, I didn't even think that made sense, but I really hated that one. And, um, I would just say it's the weakest in the Paper Mario, uh, series. Maybe, maybe Color Splash or Origami King is worse, but I've never even played those. Um, even though I could play, um, Color Splash, I just don't want to waste my money on it and everything. But, um, yeah, anyway, basically, Sticker Star, <coughs> excuse me, was not fun. Basically what happened was, um, every time you fight enemies, you know, basically... You would just get coins instead of experience, so you could avoid every enemy in the game if you wanted. And uh, the coins just let you buy more stickers and everything. And you had this nagging, annoying bitch partner named Kirsty, who she was just rude and didn't even help you. Sometimes you would just ask her, what can I do? She's like, I don't know what to do here, fucking, um, I don't know, you figure it out, you're a smart guy. And everything. She was just a nagging, annoying bitch, and I hated her, and, um, she was worse than one of my teachers I've had to deal with and stuff, and, um, there were no side quests to do after you beat the game, there was a sticker museum, but all it did was just like, you beat the sticker museum, you know, it was stupid, you didn't get anything, you know, it was dumb, um, there was no partners, and you couldn't even play as Kirsty or anything, and she was the partner, you couldn't even play as her at all, you couldn't do anything, it was just, she just sat there and did nothing, I guess, because, you know, it was cool, you could play as partners, and, um, the other Mario games, you guys, you could use them in in battle, you could use them on the field, you could use them on other things, it was just cool, and the, the plot was just stupid, and it just felt almost just so boring, and so lame, because, you know, in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, there was a cool world where you go to the moon, like, that's fucking awesome, you know, there was a cool world in Super Paper Mario where you go to space, and then, um, in the other Paper Mario game, in Paper Mario, um, 1, there was a cool world where you... You went inside of a toy box. That was really cool. But in Paper Mario Sticker Star, it's just grass world, desert world, forest world, ice world, lava world, Bowser's Castle. It was just dumb. It felt like a new Super Mario Bros. game. It was just lame. I mean, couldn't they be? Couldn't it be like 
grass world with flaming lava sharks or something or like ice world but the whole but global warming is happening and the ice world is melting and polar bears are coming out and like shooting up heroin i don't know something cool i know it was dumb i just really hated that game and if you want to see why i didn't like it go check out my little sticker star rant i did where i talk about every little thing i hated about that piece of piling shit anyway Next we have Mario 64, and I haven't beaten this one all the way, but I played enough of it where it's fun, and um, basically I give it a B tier, and it was pretty cool, I enjoyed it a lot, um, and basically it was just the, the start of 3D platformers, and it was, or not even the start of 3D platformers, 3D pla Mario games, and it was actually kind of what people use as a textbook example back in the 90s of what a 3D platform game should look like. It's someone that I never played. I've just seen him. It's like Bubsy 3D. Yeah, that's not good. But because back in the day, in the early days, it was like only 2D games. You go on Atari and stuff. There's no 3D games. Nowadays, it's almost all 3D games, you know, um, and stuff. So basically, yeah, it just wasn't all that cool um, to see older games do that. And I mean, it wasn't all that cool to um, basically see games that were not 3D and um, trying to be, and it was just stupid, but Super Mario 64 just kind of laid down the blueprints of, hey, this is what a 3D game should look like and stuff, you know, so I like that one a lot, but then next we have Mario Bros. 3, and I haven't really beaten that one all that much either, but um, yeah, we're also going to give that a B tier, it's pretty cool, and you got the 8 worlds and everything, and um, there's super cool power-ups, the Tanuki suit, the frog suit was kind of weird, I guess, but yeah, it had a cool level design, there was a a world where um, things were uh, big and small, uh, or things were really big, and it was just it was just pretty cool, and I enjoyed it. And then uh, Super Mario All Stars, I'm gonna give that a D tier, and then it, it, just because it was dumb, basically what it was, it was just um, re-releases of some of the older Mario games, Super Mario Bros. One, Two, Three, and some versions even had World. And they also gave the Lost Levels, which I guess was kind of cool. Um, but basically, yeah, I didn't really enjoy it, just because I already had all those Mario games, and I already played them on a virtual console and other stuff, so it was just basically, yeah, why would I pay more money just to do something I already had? You know, that's like, if you already have a Lamborghini, you're just gonna pay more money for another one, because this one's purple. You know, it's dumb, it's not that you don't really add anything to it or anything, it's just, no, you, it just, if you already have the games, it's not even an HD remaster or anything, because when they made a version on the Wii, you know, or, I don't even know, it was basically just, um, 16 bits, and the Wii is, like, 128 bits, so, I mean, it wasn't even a remaster to the Wii or anything, it didn't even make it in, I don't know, Mario Galaxy style or something, make it up to, up to snuff or something, just make it up to the modern times, it was basically just, here's a 16-bit version, they just kept the title screen on, too, they didn't even do anything different, it was just kind of lazy, in my opinion, and I, re I guess it really wasn't a good way to celebrate Mario's 25th anniversary, when they made it on the Wii, it was just kind of stupid, so next we have, um, I'm just gonna go over this one, because I've never played it, um, Super Mario Land Golden Coins, I never played, uh, Super Mario... Yoshi's Island never played. Super Mario Sunshine, I played like six stars or shine, so we're kind of put in the way to never played. Um, just because I played it, but I haven't played enough of the game to actually judge it. You know, I played like the first world, I guess, so I haven't really played enough to um, really give it a fair judgment. Maybe, I don't know, one day I'll mention, oh, I liked it a lot or whatever. Um, but yeah, basically, next we have Super Mario Bros., and this one was a lot of fun, actually. I liked it, and it was, um, some people, it was their first ever experience with uh, Mario, but, um, I mean, I got it on the Virtual Console 3DS and everything for, I think, five bucks, so it was pretty cool, and I liked it a lot, and, um, it was just 2D platforming fun, a lot of great stuff, and it was actually one of the games that single-handedly saved the video game crash of 1983, because they had shit like E.T. or Tanks or something dumb games on the Atari that nobody wanted to play, so this game just, um, I think it's, I don't know if it's sold the most out of any Mario game, but I know it's sold a lot, so I feel like it does at least on the top five or something, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, I enjoyed that one, it was a great game, and then, um, next we have Mario Galaxy, and, um, I agree with this one probably about as much as I do with two, 
I thought it was a lot of fun, and uh, basically it's the same thing. Like I also did this on my channel, Let's Play. Basically, um, every 100 years, a Star Comet comes by and all that jazz. And uh, Mario basically just um, goes to rescue Peach because he's been um, taken to space and all that shit. And it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of cool galaxies to play through, and I really had a good time with it. And the only thing I didn't enjoy was how you had to beat the whole game just to play as Luigi. And then if you play as Luigi and beat it, all you get was an extra galaxy, I guess. It was kind of cool, but I mean, it was still better than the Green Stars in Galaxy 2. But I mean, hey, that was it was kind of fun. At least they added something new in Galaxy 2, and it was all these new collectibles. But in Galaxy 1, it was just same levels except with Luigi. I've heard the Cosmic, cl the cosmic Clone races are different, but I never really noticed anything, honestly. It was just, I don't know. Then finally... We have um, Mario World, and uh, I played like the first world of this, so I don't have really enough to judge. Um, so we're just gonna say that um, I don't have enough experience in the game. Same with Sunshine, how I played some of it, but I played barely any of it. So I just feel like it wouldn't really be fair to um, judge it if I didn't play as much. So anyway, that is our tier list. So. Basically, S tier, we have um, Mario and Luigi, Bowser's Inside Story, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, Mario Galaxy 2, Luigi's Mansion, Mario Galaxy 1. Uh, a tier, we have New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Super Paper Mario, Super Mario 3D World, Mario Luigi Dream Team, Super Mario Bros. B tier, we have Mario Maker, New Super Mario Bros. Uh, Mario and Luigi and Seven, not Mario and Luigi, Super Mario RPG, Seven Stars, Mario and Luigi, Superstar Saga, Paper Mario, Super Mario 64, Mario Bros. 3, C tier, we have Super Mario Bros. 2, Super Mario 3 Land, New Super Mario Bros. 2, D tier, we have, uh, Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, New Super Mario Bros. 2, Yoshi's New Island, Mario and Luigi, Burners in Time, Sticker Star, All Stars, and then Never Played, we have Odyssey, um, Color Splash, uh, the two Mario Land games, Yoshi's Island, Snoo Super, yeah, Super Mario Sunshine, and um, Mario World. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one, and I will let you know. Um, I mean, you can let me know if you're ever going to want me to do more tier lists in the future. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one, and uh, have a good day, everyone.